Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. My name is Greg Pomenkala, and I am principal software engineer at Splunk, which is now a Cisco company. Today, I will be discussing optimizing latency in Argo workflow submissions. The objective of this presentation is to identify the factors contributing to latency in Argo workflows and to explore potential strategies to mitigate these issues. There are several methods to submit workflows in Argo through Argo CLI invocation, Argo server API calls, posting a workflow custom resource with Kubernetes client, utilizing the Argo SDK, Argo events, and GitOps. Each method has its own characteristics and potential impacts on latency. Here we have an example of a workflow manifest that defines multiple tasks referenced from a workflow template. Looking at the workflow manifest alone, can anyone guess how long it will take to submit it to Argo workflows? Any guesses? One minute, okay. Okay, so let's see. We gathered data on production workflow invocations and ran a few experiments using synthetic workflow manifests while the initial observation was that latency increases when multiple workflows are submitted simultaneously, the most significant takeaway was the strong correlation between the number of workflow template references in the workflow manifest and submission latency. Two major sources of latency include template validation and traversing over the workflow document. Additionally, Resolving template references can add unbound latency to workflow submissions. You may have noticed that same workflow template is fetched multiple times, even if it was fetched for a previous reference within the same workflow manifest. High load on the Kubernetes API server and ECDD can further aggravate these delays, making it crucial to manage these aspects efficiently. Can you have a quick look at the chart we have on the slide? This is a breakdown of calls to Kubernetes API server at the time we submitted several workflows to the cluster. Is there anything unusual about it? Any suspects? Okay, so I will give you a hint that um, the, top, the top of the, of the chart is actually the uh, reading of the workflow templates. Uh, the rate of the workflow template get calls surpasses that N of over API calls by a significant margin here. Although excessive calls to Kubernetes API directly impact submission latency, there are a few other con consequences I would like to highlight. One of these is the high load on the API server and it's the ETCD, which may negatively affect the overall performance of the entire cluster. There is also a significant risk of hitting API rate limits, which will further delay workflow submissions. In our server scenarios, active rate limit affects not only the offender, but also other operations that rely on interaction with API server, effectively causing a noisy neighbor, noisy neighbor problem. Additionally, Excessive API calls require computing and memory resources to make the network requests, unmarshal API responses, allocate memory, and perform garbage collection of short-lived objects. To optimize latency, we can explore several strategies. One such strategy is implementing rate limit overrides for the Argo server. This approach is particularly beneficial when workflows are submitted through the Argo UI. Additionally, it is effective in scenarios where the Argo SDK or Argo CLI are configured to interact with Argo server instead of directly accessing the Kubernetes API server. Another strategy involves implementing rate limit overrides for the Argo SDK's Kubernetes client. This is particularly advantageous when the Argo SDK 
or Argo CLI bypasses the Argo server and directly interacts with the Kubernetes API server. Please keep in mind that these configuration changes do not address the root cause of the problem, which is that the Argo workflow server and client components fetch workflow templates too frequently. Please ensure that your API server can handle the increased load associated with lifting the rate limits. Submitting workflow custom resources via the Kubernetes client can address latency issues. However, this method bypasses validation entirely. As a result, it may not be reliable because the caller does not receive immediate feedback if a malformed resource is created. This may be a good strategy for workflows that have already been validated and are mature enough to be submitted without the safety net that the validation provides. Caching Kubernetes API server responses on the Argo server side is particularly beneficial when workflows are submitted through the Argo UI. Additionally, it is effective in scenarios where the Argo SDK or Argo CLI is configured to interact with the Argo server instead of directly accessing the Kubernetes API server. This strategy requires the rate limit override mentioned in the previous slides because the Argo server does not recognize that it is communicating with a cache-aware proxy. Without this configuration, it will still delay its own request to the API server. Caching API server responses on the Argo client side is advantageous when the Argo SDK or Argo CLI bypasses the Argo server and directly interact with the API server. The rate limit override mentioned in previous slides is also required here, as the caching occurs in the HTTP client middleware, which the rate limiter is not aware of. Without this override, the rate limiter would still de delay requests under the default configuration. And finally, Addressing the root cause by adding a template caching support to the workflow validation function. Uh, this caching utilizes, utilizes the informer pattern, which includes essential components such as the list area watcher and shared informer. I highly recommend exploring this pattern as it is beneficial for building efficient Kubernetes, Kubernetes applications. Although this strategy requires a patch to the Orgo workflow's code base, it has proven to be the most successful approach so far. It leverages an in-memory cache of workflow template instances, eliminating the need to go through the entire HTTP stack and avoiding the overhead of request response marshalling. Uh, my team at Splunk has a pending pull request for this improvement and hopefully a wider audience will soon be able to reap the performance benefit it provides. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions or would like to discuss this topic further, please do not hesitate to contact me via LinkedIn at the provided link. Please also spare some time to rate my presentation. Thank you for your time. Keep optimizing your systems and have a great KubeCon. Thank you.